I'm pretty sure that you must be aware of what cloud computing is. But do you know about serverless computing? Well, despite the misnomer, serverless computing does in fact involve servers. The term serverless refers to the developer's interaction with such servers. He or she cannot see, control or otherwise communicate with them. Today, each of the top cloud service providers, including Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud and IBM, offers a serverless platform. Hello everyone and welcome to this video by Intellipart. In this video, I will be talking about serverless computing. Let's take a look at the agenda. Firstly, we will see what is serverless computing, after which we will take a look at its architecture and then we will move on to how does serverless computing work, after which we will see a few use cases of serverless computing. Moving on, we will see the pros and cons and then the serverless computing market and lastly its evolution. Now before we begin, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon for regular updates from us. Now let's get started with the first agenda that is what is serverless computing. A cloud native development methodology called serverless enables developers to create and execute applications without having to worry about managing servers. In serverless, servers still exist but they are separated from the app development process. The routine tasks of setting up, maintaining, and scaling the server infrastructure are handled by a cloud provider. For deployment, developers only need to package their code in containers. Serverless applications respond to demands and autonomously scale up and down as necessary after they are deployed. Public cloud providers' serverless services are often built on demand using an event-driven execution approach. As a result, a serverless function is free to use while it is not in use. Now let's take a look at the architecture of serverless. In contrast to other cloud computing architectures, serverless relies on the cloud provider to manage both the infrastructure and app scaling. Containers in which serverless apps are deployed instantly launch whenever a call is made. Users pre-purchase units of capacity under the typical infrastructure as a service cloud computing paradigm, which means you pay a public cloud provider to always on server components to operate your apps. It is the user's obligation to increase server capacity during periods of high demand and decrease server capacity during periods of low demand. Even when an app is not being used, the cloud infrastructure required to run it is still in use. In contrast, serverless architecture allows for the sporadic activation of apps. The public cloud provider dynamically allows resources for app code when an event causes it to run. When the code has completed running, the user stops paying. Serverless release developers of tedious and time-consuming code connected with app scalability and server provisioning in addition to the cost and efficiency advantages. Serverless allows users to outsource common duties to a cloud service provider, including managing the operating system and file system, applying security updates, load balancing, capacity management, scaling, logging, and monitoring. You can create an app that is totally serverless or one that uses both serverless and traditional microservices components. Moving on, we'll see how does serverless computing work. Serverless computing users contract out the development of their backend systems. This covers databases, computation, storage, and data flow processing. As a result, the user focuses on the design. This dynamic is easily comparable to that of a busy restaurant. Although you delegate all of the cooking work, you are in charge of the menu's name, decor, ambience, as well as the preparation and presentation of the food. Another group is in charge of peeling the potatoes, checking the availability and freshness of the goods, increasing the sauce, and expertly preparing the food. The cherry on top is that you only pay them when they are working and per the hour. The main restriction to keep in mind is that you are establishing a dependency relationship with a different firm. While delegation broadens your options, it also reduces your level of independence. When considering complicated applications, serverless computing also has its drawbacks. Serverless computing is event-driven, meaning that a function is run whenever an event takes place. In this regard, it is distinct from, for instance, using virtual machines or past models. When performing a function, the designer or developer hires a specific type of space but only pays when the function is really carried out. The underlying idea is that the user pays for the service provided by the server rather than the server itself. Therefore, 
the application code and any associated stateless or neutral functions must be written by the developer. Let's take a look at a few use cases of serverless computing. For asynchronous stateless apps that can be launched right away, serverless architecture is appropriate. Serverless is also an excellent fit for use cases with irregular erratic spikes in demand. Think of a task that might occur infrequently but needs to be prepared, for example, when a sizable batch of photos arrive all at once, such as batch processing of incoming image files, or a task like keeping track of new database changes and applying a number of operations, including automatically translating or comparing the changes to quality standards. Incoming data streams, chatbots, scheduled tasks, and business logic are all suitable use cases for serverless apps. Backend APIs and web apps, business process automation, serverless websites, and system integration are some other frequent serverless use cases. Let's take a look at the pros and cons. Firstly, we'll talk about the pros. Firstly, serverless computing can boost developer output while lowering overhead expenses. The provisioning and management of servers can be delegated freeing up developers' time to work on their applications. By removing the need for developers to explicitly specify the infrastructure that operations must provide for them, serverless facilitates the adoption of DevOps. By combining whole components from independent BAS services, it is possible to further streamline the creation of apps. As opposed to always running and managing your own servers, a serverless architecture allows you to pay for cloud-based compute time as it is required, which lowers operational costs. Let's take a look at the cons. Now, there may be negative effects from not managing your own server or server-side logic. Your own system's ability to be flexible and customizable may be limited by the severe limitations imposed by cloud providers on how their components can be interacted with. When working in BAS environments, Developers could be reliant on third-party services whose code they have no control over. Lastly, you run the risk of vendor lock-in if you give up control of certain components of your IT stack. Upgrading your systems to meet the requirements of the new vendor will probably be expensive if you decide to switch service providers. Now, let's take a look at the serverless computing market. 2020 has seen the serverless computing market dominated by a small number of companies. These include Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, IBM Cloud Functions, and AWS Lambda. Amazon was a pioneer in the industry and is unquestionably the go-to supplier today. However, the market is expanding quickly and its rivals aim to overtake it as a dominant force in the years to come. The market is expected to increase at a 26% annual pace from 2019 to 2023. Lastly, let's take a look at the evolution. With the rise in popularity of containers and on-demand cloud services, the ideas of serverless architecture and FAST have developed simultaneously. A research conducted divided the development of serverless technology into three stages. Firstly, we have version 1.0. The initial version had drawbacks that rendered it unsuitable for use in everyday computing. Then we have version 1.5. Kubernetes introduction ushered in the serverless 1.5 period, during which many serverless frameworks began to automatically scale containers. And lastly, we have the version 2.0. With the inclusion of integration and state, the serverless 2.0 era, repeat, with the inclusion of integration and state, the serverless 2.0 era is already beginning to take shape. In order to make serverless viable for general purpose corporate operations, Providers have begun to integrate the necessary components. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in cloud computing, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification on cloud and DevOps by IIT Madras. This course is taught by industry experts and IIT Madras faculty. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.